Okay, this is like hilariously embarrassing right now because <laughs> I'm sitting in the uh, movie theater parking lot, you know, and um, there's like an entire row of cars across from me and I pulled out my old fucking like shitty tripod, like phone tripod that's like kind of broken and I probably look crazy, but I'm sick of like recording videos when it's like down and sitting like anyways. <laughs> I, while editing any of the videos I've recorded in the past couple months, um, not all of them, the ones I've recorded in the car, um, I <laughs> almost don't even want to post because the angle is like so low and I look so stupid. Anyways, doesn't matter. Let me start this, well, that looks stupid. Okay, let me start this by, um, well, this was my court outfit. I took my boots off though, so it's like, not as impressive but the sweater do y'all think this is like a burnt orange or is this just brown and i'm dramatic and have wishful thinking let me know anyways what really makes the only thing that makes this outfit decent is um i put a bow in my hair are you ready god that chair is so loud okay I don't know if you can see that. Hold up. I gotta like lean down. <laughs> ah, okay. There's the bow. Uh, anyways, I did not bring a. Uh, oh, wait, look at these. I got my famine socks on because it's finally getting cold. Isn't that crazy? I, I swear to God, if anybody is like sees me, they probably think I'm insane and I'm so embarrassed. Anyways. I am recording this on my phone this time, which I basically like never do oh maybe i should have it like maybe i should fix this where it's like y'all can see the little charm thing i don't think it's gonna like it says uh conversation in time my old friend cameron got that for me because um i the claro song i really 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 adore the lyric um but what if all i want is conversation in time because me me for real for real um we can talk about the topic of future like tattoo ideas even though i probably won't get that one tattooed it's like in the list of like ideas but it probably won't happen but the most brief version of it is um a lot of relationships in my life uh end up not working out or a lot of people don't aren't interested in having long form conversation and like meaningful interactions. They just are, have ill intention or like, it sounds so narcissistic, but it's a pattern. Like they just want to sleep with me, um, which I, I hate. And obviously it's not every single person. It's just kind of a trend because I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I do not get it at all. I truly it's it's really strict this fucking seat like do you hear that that's awful it's like it's gonna bother me so much like it's squeaky anyways <laughs> um so i i have never really got the whole uh why people tend to look at me that way or i, I don't know i think it's really strange that um people perceive me as pretty you know i sound so fucking pick me and i don't mean to i just have always found it as an objective fact that i look a little dorky on camera i look a lot better but in person i look dorky as fuck because i have awful posture which i need to fix <gasps> it's so bad it's so bad my posture is so bad it's it's painful how horrible my posture is um, I have like a giant overjet, like my teeth are bad, they stick out. Um, I have to consciously make sure my front teeth aren't sticking out. It's, it's humiliating and they're awful. They are like rotting out of my head. They're awful. Um, and they just, it's kind of the, uh, Mr. Burns look. Someone on TikTok commented that and A, funny as fuck. Oh my God. Hilarious and accurate um but also like oh my god that's accurate no but 
It is funny. It's like the, the Timmy Turner comment. Also funny, also accurate. Does it hurt? Maybe a little, but not really. Not really for it, like, like about five seconds, but then it's fine, you know? Um, gosh, I got off topic. Um, I just think it's an objective fact that I look a little strange and dorky, so I've never understood it. But that doesn't matter. God, that entire thing sounds so pick me, and I'm not trying to like fish for compliment, you know? Um, I'm just, I don't know. It's, it's not that. I'll probably cut that out because I don't even remember how I got there. Um, how the fuck did I get there? Oh, conversation in time. I remember. Sorry. <laughs> um, so because that is a trend in my life, um, I really, really, really crave uh, dialogue, long form conversation, uh, meaningful things. It's like uh, how the the old manager thing really, really hurt when it was it really, really is dramatic, but it did kind of hurt when, uh, you know, yeah, I had stopped working there and then it just turned into him sending me dick pics. And that was a little sad because we could have, we had really nice conversations and like, good chemistry, you know? I don't even know if that's true. I was just hyper fixated, I think, but I don't know, I think we had good dia dialogue. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's like the right way to use that, <laughs> like if that makes sense. Anyways, when, when that turned just into him sending me a million dick pics, it just like, that was so sad because I, uh, whatever, whatever. But people in my life that will have that like they mean so much to me and it's what i crave in the world so uh there are people parking who are gonna see that i'm recording myself like a crazy person anyways that's why i thought about getting that tattooed i probably won't but it means a lot to me and this was an old friend where we don't really talk anymore which makes me really sad uh, just some stuff happened, um, when I was moving in with Ethan, like, just shit hit the fan, and I lost, like, all of my friends, and I miss him, and I've apologized, but I can understand him not forgiving me, he doesn't owe me forgiveness, you know, um, but I, I do miss him, we went to, um, Berkeley together to go see Mom Jeans, and we saw Elton John, I don't know, there's a lot of good memories, and I miss him, and, uh... I think in ways, maybe he was my soulmate. That doesn't mean it was explicitly, like, a romantic thing, but... I just think we really got along, and I just miss him being in my life. But he, we hadn't really been talking much, but he did get me that for my birthday. Um, not this year, but last year. Because we went to Berkeley in 2022, and this was the gift he got me in June of 2023. Which we just hadn't been talking much because, I mean, we would on, only really see each other at work, but I had, and I ended up quitting that June. Um, because I got him hired at uh, my old job. <laughs> um, and it, I thought it was a little ironic that he got me that when he stopped talking to me. But it was sweet and it's meaningful. I wish it would like face the right way because it's, it's just a little nice thing. Remember when I said I would make that brief? I did not make it brief. There is like a car that pulled up over there and I'm so humiliated because it's like, girl, who the fuck do you think you are to sit and like record yourself like anybody gives a fuck? Like, ew, it doesn't matter. The windows are rolled up, so I don't think they can hear me. Unless I'm being like crazy, I don't know. Sorry, I'm, I'm pushing my insecurity on y'all. Um, oh, I didn't bring 
I, this is like the first time in like forever that I, that I didn't bring like a notebook at all in my bag, um, which would have been helpful. Uh, I don't like how that sweater is making me look on camera. Um, I normally like always do at least keep something I can write with, but I didn't even bring like a pen. So my list of topic ideas is on my phone and I am recording on my phone and don't have the iPad. Um, I miss my fucking MacBook. It, it's, it's destroyed. I've done everything to try to fix it and it's just at the point of no return and I miss it. And hopefully when I'm working, I can at some point get a new one. Well, or like a refurbished one or whatever. Like, I don't need a brand spanking new one. I just, I loved that laptop. I do one day kind of want to get the, uh, like, over-the-ear uh, Apple headphones. I know there's better headphones for a lot cheaper, but it's another one I'd either get refurbished or wait till there's a giant sale. But I don't, I probably will never get them, but I really, really want them because they are, I know there are better headphones out there, but they are pretty decent headphones and I'm not gonna lie, they're pretty cute. I don't know. Both crazy expensive things. I'm unemployed and poor. My bank account is always either negative or almost negative. Um, whoops. But one day, one, Day. Anyways, um, God, what was on my list? Fuck, what was on the list? I could just look, but then I gotta, like, pause this or whatever. Fuck. Okay, I think I'm just gonna have to look. Hold up. Okay, this probably isn't at the exact same angle, so my bad. But... Um, I looked at the list and a couple things on it were, um, so I don't listen to that many podcasts. I'm very, very select about it. I, I probably at some point will listen to more, but I go in like big phases. Like I, right now I've been obsessed with Madeline Argy. I love her. I love her. We think so alike. Um, she's gorgeous and I don't know. I just love her. Um, and then the, uh, director's cut podcast obviously but that one's pretty on and off because it's when you know like i'll see a movie and there's actually an episode about it but i mean there's been a few i've watched without seeing the movie but you know they're m more interesting if you know i know what the fuck they're talking about uh god i really really dislike todd phillips i I keep wanting to go, I hate that guy, fuck him. But uh, I I don't know the guy. I just dislike, strongly dislike his art. <laughs> but we won't get into that. That's a topic for another day. Um, but one of the episodes of uh, the director's cut that was the one about Maestro by Bradley Cooper um, Bradley Cooper is one hell of a filmmaker. There's a dude directly there that's like humiliated. Bradley Cooper is one hell of a filmmaker. Um, I really loved him in Nightmare Alley, but I'm biased. Uh, but my show really proved to me. I was like, this man, oh my God. It's, it is just a wonderful movie. I'm um, so, it's, it's really frustrating when with all the uh, Netflix made movies that they almost never actually you know what I don't fully know this this is me going based off of what I've heard and what I've seen this year because I only really started going to the theater a lot at the end of May I have at, with Regal the emails they send you um, they'll say how many movies that you've seen this year um, and I I'm about to hit 90. I'm on 89. Um, so that's a little embarrassing. But um, I feel like I'm yelling, you know? Like, why am I being so damn loud? There's like hair stuff. Anyways. 
Uh, I've I've always loved movies, obviously, but you know the theater is expensive. But I started unlimited uh, after the situation. So uh, yeah, from what I've heard and then what I've experienced throughout this year, at least. Um, Netflix very, very rarely gives a theatrical release, or if they do, it's like a New York, LA thing, you know? So what was super, super exciting is um, at the beginning of the year, uh, most theaters will do, um, they'll, they'll re-show the Best Picture nominees right before the Oscars, and uh, I'm just talking about how I rarely went to the theater like a, a crazy person, though I very much so did that this time. Because I did have like Regal for a little bit at the beginning of the year, and then I stopped it, and then in at the end of May I started it again. Um, God, I feel like I'm being so aggressive. I'm also like leaning forward, like this is so intense. Why am I being so intense right now? Um, gosh. The like, last year, at the beginning of last year, I didn't really, I, I only went to see uh, the Banshees of Inishirin, who, <clears throat> oh my God, uh, the Banshees of Inishirin, which, got nominated obviously and has become one of my favorite movies now of all, like all time it's definitely on that list of like movies I think everybody should see um which I I I can't say this for a fact but I think if not everyone the majority of people would at least find part like they would at least have one aspect that they would like enjoy about it if not they would just like the movie i think a lot a lot a lot a lot of people would like or love the movie even um but i can't speak for everyone <laughs> um but it also maybe was just a uh good time for me to see it i think can you hear all the rain i hope that's not too loud um, it was just kind of what I needed to see as well because that was coming up on the uh, first, yeah, the first, and you're getting aggressive. It was it was coming up on the first anniversary of that big friendship breakup I had um, that devastated me. <laughs> uh, it was bad. It was really bad. It was really really bad. Um, holy fuck. It was bad. I look. I probably look crazy to these people. Um, yeah, that that's a whole thing. That's a story for another time. I, I've probably mentioned it before because it is such like a canon event. It's like one of those life events, you know. Um, because there's some specific. Why? It's like that for everybody. There's some like specific life events that it, uh, you know define a certain period. Anyways. I was coming up on the first anniversary of that, and so far, um, every year, it's the anniversary of it is the 1st of March, and so far, every year, I've gotten pretty emotional around that time, because it's all I can think about, and hopefully it will heal with time. It's definitely healed some, but I think it's forever going to be... Maybe the wound will close, but it's gonna be one of those with scar tissue. Oh my god. Can I get off topic for like just a second? But I'll, I'll make it like literally like a minute. Uh, speaking of scars, <laughs> um, I have, okay, I'm gonna be so like for real with y'all and maybe too open because I'm actually really embarrassed about this, but you know, I need to tell somebody because I've been thinking about it a lot. Um, so over, you know, not a decade, but the better half of a decade, the better part of a decade, I have on and off 
like self-harmed you know and it's not always been cutting but like it's there have been phases of life where i i guess i'm gonna have to put a big like trigger warning before this um so editing miranda put a trigger warning in for this section because i don't want to be canceled <laughs> um anyways i uh okay the minute starts now because i need to do this super fast maybe this isn't the video to drop this in but you know i'll say it at least now we'll see if i keep it in okay so i've gone through phases from like in I, I did some in middle school. I had a little bit of a phase in high school. Um, I think actually two little phases in high school. There was one like sophomore year that was kind of a lot. And then just a tiny bit junior year. But I, I just, it wasn't normally what I did. I would normally end up just, I, unintentionally tend to surround myself with maybe not the best people um though don't get me wrong there has been some amazing people it's not only bad people but there's just been i i tend to anyways it's it's not always cutting and then i had a really big issue with it a few months back back in the spring I, it started again and i don't even know why but it was it was bad throughout the spring and I've got some my oh it makes me so sad I don't want this to be sad hold up this don't be sad okay <laughs> let's all agree to not be sad I need to wrap this the fuck up I have some scars on my like this outsides of my like upper thigh you know and there's they're on both sides but specifically on the um right side like my my right <laughs> um there's some with like pretty big scar tissue on it because those not a lot because i was mostly a coward <laughs> and didn't do too many too deep but there was there was a few times where it definitely happened and uh well being forced to be back at my parents over the summer when it would get way too hot when it was getting over 100 degrees you know at some point you just have to wear shorts and like seeing them look at them and like you you kind of end up seeing even people not a lot not a lot not a lot of people like stare you know but it it does happen on occasion and not very often but again occasionally it gets commented on and uh there's a fear that I've like ruined my body that I'll never ever look right and that I think they theoretically it, here's the thing I don't think this about them on anybody else that's the thing this isn't what I think about anyone else it's just a weird hypocritical insecurity that's I only put on myself because I think scars can be very, very beautiful. And uh, I don't think they really, like, I don't think they necessarily have to really matter. Um, but hypocritically, I've gotten really insecure about it because it's like, did I ruin my body? Um, my parents commented on it a lot where it was like, I don't know, it's just kind of humiliating because it's like carrying a mark of, struggle or mental illness you know it just i don't know what did they put on the mentally ill no i'm not gonna make that reference that's not funny at all anyways that's that that was definitely more than a minute that was sad maybe i'm gonna cut that out and we can talk about that later because that's not the vibe anyways holy shit i got so off topic we were talking about podcasts um yeah Madeline Argy, the director's cut, A24, um, the occasional like directors on directors. Um, oh, oh, hold up with the director's cut one, the episode. Just kidding, I already explained that. Uh, so the A24 one, some of the directors on directors, 
there's also like video essayists that I adore, CJ the X, ContraPoints, Philosophy Tube, you know, the classics. But there's there's a few more podcasts that I'll kind of listen to, like sometimes, but I've definitely not as much anymore. But uh, one of those has never been uh, Chicken Shop Date. Not that I have anything against her. Like I, the clips I see, like it's it's fun and I enjoy it. It's just not something I ever picked up, you know. And uh, have y'all seen the thing with her and Andrew Garfield? <gasps> he is so in love with her, and I'm so excited for. I'm gonna watch the damn episode that they are coming out with at the end of the week with those two, because they're literally gonna fall in love they're going to get married i'm so excited it's so adorable have you seen the clips of them on the red carpet she makes him so flustered it's so fucking cute this chair keeps squeaking anyways it's so fucking cute and i adore it and i love them and it, it's so exciting so if you haven't seen anything about it go look it up you'll have a good time this sweater is making me look stupid anyways um yeah that was one topic. God, what was the other one? Oh, 070, 070 Shake is releasing a new album at the, in the middle of November, which is exciting. Love her. Um, you know, she's, I don't know if she still is. You know, she's dating Lily Rose Depp. God, I'm obsessed with Lily. I literally wish I looked like Lily Rose Depp, but with different hair, with my hair. Um, it's like her or Margaret Qualley, like I wish I looked like them. Anyways. And I love 070 Shake, so. I love it. I love that they're dating. I'm so happy for them. Uh, I'm excited for that album, though. Uh, that wasn't on the list. Hold up, what the fuck else was on the list? The, uh, holy shit. What the fuck? What the fuck is on the list? Okay, hold up. I'm gonna have to check again. Um, oh, okay. So, another thing on the list is I have a complicated opinion on the um, wake up trend on TikTok right now, which is like um, people going wake up you actually have been like it something really fucked up you know and uh i have i really dislike it but i also really love an aspect of it so here's my complicated feelings about it if if you care um let's start with the positive and then i'll go into the negative negative. and one aspect of it i really really love that it's you know, creative storytelling. It can be, why the fuck does my voice sound like that right now? I'm like yelling. This is not normally how I talk. Why am I yelling? Because normally, here, how do I do, how do I switch to my normal voice? Because I feel like I talk a lot like softer normally and like calmer and like kind of like this, you know? But I'm like yelling at you for some reason. <laughs> so, uh, So, 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 <laughs> fuck, what was I literally just gonna say? What the hell? Y'all, I don't know how any of y'all, if, I, I feel like every single person has to be watching my videos in like two times speed because and like 90% of them that I have edited, I, I edit all of them in two times speed because I'm like, A, I don't want to listen to myself talk for that long, but uh, God, I talk slow when I'm like recording a video. I normally end up talking pretty fast, I think. Well, maybe it's because I'm like high for most of them, you know? Anyways the the part i really like about um the wake up trend <laughs> this is stupid who cares um 
I love that it can inspire a form of storytelling and uh, it can get you creative and it can be, it's, I, I just like that people are, you know, having fun and making up stories. That's, that's so fun to me. And you could definitely like see one and take the concept and write something for it. And I really love that. And then there's an aspect of it that I dislike on um, my really paranoid moments. I'm like, no, don't do this to me. I'm disassociated and delusional, please. Um, sorry, that's so dramatic. I have to like ground myself and remind myself that I'm real sometimes because sometimes I get so overwhelmed that it just, it doesn't feel like I'm alive or like a human being, if that makes sense. Um, I don't know, it's it's just difficult sometimes because there's very, very often, I'm, I'm working on it, but a, a lot of the time it feels like I'm almost, obviously this isn't how I'm seeing it, but it feels as if I'm uh, watching myself from like third person. Uh, my therapist told me that I tend to tell stories almost in third person. Not like fully, but like that's kind of the vibe. Which is why I'll probably be a good storyteller. Anyways, <laughs> not to toot my own horn. Is that the phrase? I don't know, not to feed my own ego. <laughs> um, anyways. Anyways, anyways, holy cow. Yeah, I have this necklace with a bell on it because it's pretty grounding and it reminds me that I'm, it's also cute, I love it. Um, Ethan got me this necklace and the bell. It's very sweet, I love this necklace. Uh, this was also his, but I wear them like all the time. But uh, the bell really helps to level me sometimes. Like when I get, so like out of body or like manic that it feels like it's not even like i'm not even like in my own body and like making the decision of course all of my actions are my own and like i have to take accountability for those but there are moments where it feels like i am just so out of control and that i'm not even deciding what i'm doing or saying like it's just happening and uh, it can help ground me in those moments so there's my, that's why I have my dramatic little thing about, oh my god, disassociated. But truly, I think I, I more enjoy the trend than I dislike it. I just had oh, very much so mixed feelings at first, but now I'm like saying it out loud and I'm like, that's silly, that's stupid. What's wrong with me? <laughs> um. Anyways, god, I'm like yelling. I feel like in the past few videos i've recorded i'm like yelling i'm never gonna post these in order so y'all are never gonna know i think i need to start i think i'm going to start putting either in like descriptions or like on the screen the day that like the date i record oh my god <clears throat> i'm so sorry the uh date i recorded it because i don't know if future me wants to go back and look at it as if a um video diary then i can get an idea of the order of events you know especially when it's come to like when i've talked about what's going on in life and like uh just because there's been like life of big life events and you know anyways that doesn't matter yeah what else was i gonna say oh my god oh do we want to talk? Oh my God, there's a fire truck in the hospital, or not hospital, hotel? What the fuck is going on? I mean, obviously a fire, but what the hell? Or do fire trucks? No. Yeah, what the fuck is going on? This is crazy. I hope everybody's okay. I'll have to like, look online in a little bit and see if uh, there's any like statement on like the crime Facebook group or whatever. 
Because it's not just like crimes, it's just like, uh, some of them will be like crashes or just stuff that happens. Fires, because we've been having some fires. Oh, wildfires mostly, but you know, it's that kind of stuff. Anyways, let me see if, oh my God. Let me see, oh, my, my nose rings got tangled. Let me look at my list again. Sorry, I'm stupid. Okay, let's do, I have like one that's a way bigger topic and then I have one that I just have like a paragraph to say. So we'll start with the paragraph one. <laughs> Um, recently I've been kind of, I don't want to use the word obsessed, but, uh, um, I've been aware of, uh, astrology stuff, you know, like I've, I've looked at some stuff on, uh, TikTok and I got my birth chart and I've tried to like see videos that kind of explain what they mean but I really really want to like know a lot more for sure. I wish I could get somebody to like read my chart and tell me everything about it but normally that costs money so which fair enough you know but uh again poor. <laughs> I have though like a Gemini stellium, I think it's called. I have a, I'll have to put my chart up somewhere on the screen, but I have like three placements in Gemini. My sun, Mercury, and Venus. Right, it's crazy. And I believe it's in the fifth house. So, I believe that means I'm uh, annoying but creative and want to love everybody. But what the fuck do I know? No, anyways. What else on my chart can I immediately remember? Um, so my sun, Gemini. My moon is Taurus. My rising is Capricorn. And then uh, Mercury, is in Gemini, Venus is in Gemini. I'm definitely not going in order. Mars, I believe, is in Cancer. Um, what else is there? I can't remember. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's okay, I'm gonna put it on screen. If you know anything about astrology and you wanna uh, help a girl out, uh, I don't know, let me know. <laughs> Okay, anyways, the last topic I have, which I had, I wish I was, <laughs> I wish I was recording this like way earlier because I had more well phrased thoughts about this and like ways to talk about it than I'm gonna have right now. So, but let's talk briefly about the substance. Um, because I loved it. But I'm, I'm more want to talk about, you know what, there's aspects of it, but to start a little, a little a wonderful little notes. Uh, a, I wish I looked like Margaret Qualley, she's just perfect. And B, Demi Moore is uh, aging like the most expensive fine wine. Like, holy fuck, she's 61, are you kidding me? Holy fuck. Um, the scene with, uh, I'm gonna end up giving the spoilers, so whatever. Um, the scene with, even though this really isn't, there is a scene in there with Demi Moore, uh, going to, she's planning to go get drinks with this, um, guy she went to, I think, high school with that she bumped into at the beginning of the movie. And uh, I keep yelling and I need to like calm the fuck down. Um, anyways, she's like getting ready to go have drinks with him. And because of all this stuff with uh, Sue, she's gotten really insecure and she keeps like running back to put more makeup on. And Demi Moore in her little red dress with the little like pointy um, shoulders 
and uh, the bright red lipstick and um, I'm really worried about this fire trunk. Anyways, the bright red lipstick. She's got like this very pink blush on. It's so fucking cute. She's so cute. She's so fucking cute. The blush on her, holy fuck. That is, it is such a look. She is gorgeous. Holy, holy cow. <laughs> um, no, she's, I love that. She looks so cute. She's so fucking cute. Anyways, um, I also just learned that like the parts of their body were like just their regular body was like prosthetic. I know for sure that uh, Margaret Qualley's like boobs in it are prosthetic. And I, I had a feeling that they were when I saw it, but I was like, oh my God, that's one hell of a prosthetic though, that it looks phenomenal. It doesn't look like one. I just kind of figured that you know maybe she wouldn't want to be that naked you know um i wonder if demi moore was i haven't done my research about this i just saw <laughs> a tiktok saying it you know so who knows i'm just believing what the internet told me um <laughs> anyways it's if you don't know the substance is a weird little I, I would kind of argue that it's art house in a way. A weird little indie art house body horror film that's got a lot of commentary on um, not just, but um, the beauty standards that women have and um, how fame really fucks up your perception of yourself and the lengths you would go to be beautiful and how society makes you feel worthless whenever you hit a certain age. And uh, it's just, you know, women have an expiration date, basically. Um, there also, I do like the interpretation of uh, almost mother and daughter. I think that's a very interesting one. I think there's many ways you can interpret this this film, but the, the mother-daughter one I didn't really think about immediately, and then I saw- I'm like still yelling. Holy shit. I didn't think about it immediately, and uh, I, I saw some stuff on like Letterboxd and like a couple TikToks talk, like talking about that, and uh, I really like the idea of it that um you know it, it was basically she was literally birthing her and there's a lot of aspects of it that do feel very mother-daughter and you know as they say daughters will suck the beauty out of you isn't that the whole thing they say when you're pregnant um that when it's a boy you're just glowing and when it's a girl they're just stealing your beauty <laughs> um but what a weird thing. What a weird, weird thing. But, you know, y you sacrifice a lot of yourself and your dreams when you have children. And, you know, they take and take and take. And that frustration while living vicariously through your children. Um, fuck what I'm saying does not make sense at all and I can tell that I'm just not making sense that's crazy um fuck I think I'm gonna have to cut this part out because I just did not collect my thoughts and I'm just having a hard time okay hold up if I'm cutting that let's what's what's one last topic I can do Hold up, hold up. Um, I'm editing this and uh, actually the when I started recording again I have about 40 minutes of like video left. So I'm gonna split this up. So cause this is already like 45 minutes. So see ya part two, bitches. Bitch.